Good morning. Welcome to worship on this, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, the day when we continue our 75th anniversary celebration, focusing our attention on this way of love and the seven practices of a Jesus-centered life. Today in our celebration, we are talking about our mission and travel trips that have happened through St. Mark. And so we're focusing on that practice of go, how we take the good news of Jesus Christ out into the world. Today, we'll get to see some pictures from those mission trips during the prelude. We'll also get to hear some stories of those who have attended those trips, and it'll be a special delight this day during the sermon to hear those stories. As we prepare, uh, as we continue in our 75th anniversary celebration, we prepare for September 12th. We will gather at Lions Park at 10 a.m. for worship, followed by a picnic box lunch. That means that um, if you'd like to attend, we do need a reservation. Um, you can call the church office or look in your bulletin for a, an, a link uh, to an event right to let us know that you are coming so we might have lunch for you. Uh, and if you are in need on that day of valet service, right, someone to uh, take your car from where it's closest to worship space uh, and park it somewhere and bring it back, we will have that as well as people to help bring the chairs that you have uh, to use during worship to the space. So if those are concerns that you've had, we will take care of those things. And if you're willing to volunteer in either of those capacities to bring things, uh, chairs to the worship space from people's cars or to help cars get to a parking lot and back, uh, we would love to have your help with that. We also, as part of our um, celebration, are doing God's work, our hands. We're doing it a little bit differently this year. That means that on Saturday, September 18th, we will be going as a group to Feed My Starving Children. In your bulletin, you'll find information on how to sign up for that event. And we'll put our hands to work in nourishing God's people, which is the heart and ministry of St. Mark. A note that uh, we celebrated the life of Wally Wenzel this past week um, by in, uh, just spreading his ashes in the Memorial Garden. Wally is the first person uh, to have his ashes spread there, and he uh, was spread yesterday, uh, two days after what would have been his 90th birthday. And so we keep the Wenzel family in our prayers, and we give thanks for Wally's presence with us right outside these windows as we worship this day. We also give thanks for Amy's presence here today. Tim is on vacation, and Amy, we are so thankful for your presence to lead us in song this day. And with that, we will enjoy uh, Amy's beautiful music and some slides from our mission trips with our prelude.
we come to worship, to be nourished body, mind, and spirit by God's love so that we might take that love out into the world as we go. I invite you to stand if you've participated in a learning travel trip through St. Mark to places like Israel or Ober Amergal. Please stand. Thank you for your ministry. Please stand if you've participated in our mission trips to New Orleans following Hurricane Katrina. Thank you for your ministry. Please stand if you attended a national youth gathering or an LYO convention. Thank you for your ministry. Please stand if you've participated as a youth or as a chaperone in one of our youth mission trips. Thank you for your ministry. Please stand, all of you. All of you take the love of God out with you to your daily lives, to the places that you travel, the ministry you do as you go. God, we praise you for 75 years of love in and through this place, especially in our journeys beyond this building. Come into our midst, gather us in, nourish us and help us always as we continue on the journey of your way of love. Amen. You may be seated for the opening hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray the prayer of the day together. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you. We pray this through your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, today for our children's time, I want to start by pointing out that today we hear that once we have been well fed, once we have eaten from uh, Jesus' bread of life, that we have some work to do. And it's not a punishment, it's not a uh, grind of work, but we're an invitation uh, to do some work, to feel that good feeling of doing some good work, right? And so as you hear the stories, you'll hear people talking about that joyful work, that good, hard work um, that feels good when you have eaten your fill and then um, you get up to some work. Now, I know some of you uh, know what that feels like because you started school this week, and so you've been back at it and you've been working hard, and so you may have seen the back-to-school blessing back there And you can grab one of those if you want. You'll notice that it has Yoda on the other side from Star Wars on it, right? That's how you know it's there, right? Or which one it is, right? Um, We'll come back to the back-to-school blessing, right? Yoda is a little silly. But Yoda's all about learning and what um, good work, learning, 
um, can be. And so that's another part of, of, of the work we can do, right? And so um, that's there, but we'll come back to this. And then you may have noticed that there are a couple other things on the table, right, that can help you do some good work during church, right? One of them we call it a scavenger hunt, but it really is a, a list of things you can do, young people and old people, during church that can, it can give you ideas uh, for ways you can be in church. Looking at the stained glass windows is really good. Daydreaming about your week and how it connects to church is really good. But there's some other good ideas in here, too, you can, you can come up with. And so this is the long form, and then this is the short form, right? It's almost like a coloring page on one side, and then some questions on the other. So there's, I just point those out to you, for the, because those are, those are some good work you can do, either in church or you can take with you, right? Well, for the rest of our children's time, I want to give you that back-to-school blessing, because I know you all are working very hard already. Right, so hear this blessing, friends. God of knowledge and wisdom, bless all our students, young and old, as they begin a new school year. Help them discover and develop the gifts you've given. As they grow in knowledge, help them also to grow in kindness and compassion, learning and respect for themselves and others. We also ask your blessing on all parents and those who care for our students. Strengthen them to surround our students with encouragement, support, and love. Remind us that wherever we go, you are always with us, God, and fill us with the joy of learning so that we may be better equipped to be your servants. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, friends, there's your blessing. We're listening for that good work. We're going to hear those, uh, some of our, our first lesson in our gospel. Listen for how we can work. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. In our readings this day, we hear about God protecting people as they go on their way. And we hear about people who want to continue to walk with Jesus, to go with Jesus even when it's difficult, even when it's hard, even when they don't quite understand what it is that's in front of them or where they're headed. And this day we get to celebrate the people in our midst who have gone out with God by their side to bring that good news of Jesus Christ and the eternal life that he offers and to do that hard work knowing that God is with them. And so first we get to hear about uh, those Katrina trips that St. Mark did. Cafeteria, bunk beds, and shower facilities. Upon arrival, we were given name badges, a tour of the facilities, and listened to the rules. During both times there, we bagged food, popped, painted, hung blinds, doors, etc. There was never a lack of things to do. One assignment Cindy Decker and I had was to help a woman pack up her belongings as she was moving to live with her daughter. We left early and drove by the beach to see the destruction and take pictures. We stopped at a home, or what was left of it, with a large red sign attached to a tree tree with the numbers 544 on it. At lunch, we asked if there was a park close by where we could eat our lunch and give her some space. Norma directed us to her home. We drove to the exact number 544 home we had stopped at that morning to finish our coffee. Norma might have directed us to her home, but I think God drove us there. We met many kind people who are loving and they thanked us for helping their neighbors and friends. By the grace of God, this could have been any of us. It was hard to say goodbye. I appreciate the things I have now more than ever. I have a roof over my head, food on the table, many friends and family I can always count on. Before the trip, I bought an inexpensive waterproof time as walk whose face lit up. I still have that watch today and think of all the people we helped and prayed they are doing well. It was truly a blessing to have been able to help others. was the story of Jan Serafini, one of the people who went on those mission trips to Katrina, or after Katrina. And now we get the opportunity to hear from Jill Gallion, who will share about her many, many <laughs> mission trip experiences. Thank you for being here today, Jill. Thank you. Like Pastor Christie said, I have been on a number of mission trips through St. Mark, starting in high school. As a youth, I went to the youth gathering in New Orleans uh, through current times as an adult. Since 2007, I have chaperoned many youth on two youth gatherings in New Orleans, eight out of nine teen serve trips. The one I missed, I was at Kala's, my daughter's college graduation. Um, One trip to Oaks Indian Mission and a trip to Holden Village in the Cascade Mountains of Washington State. About 34 different youth went with me, some going on multiple trips. Looking back at the youth gatherings I attended, I was in awe of the magnitude of the event. Looking around the Superdome in 1976 with 26,000 youth and chaperones, and then again in 2009 and 2012 with about 35 in attendance was amazing to me. Everyone worshiping together, praising God together. It was awesome. It made God so big to me. For all the teen serve trips I chaperoned, except the last two, we weren't with anyone from our own St. Mark group during the work day. So I got to know even more kids stories over the years. It was always one of my favorite times of the day when we would come back from a work day and meet after dinner 
uh, with our St. Mark group and hear what our kids had been up to for the day. Hearing, learning, interacting, playing with other Christians with some different faith practices and being able to discuss these differences and similarities and seeing things a new way. Youth gatherings and teen serve trips were about helping the community we were in. The youth gatherings of 2009 and 2012 were following Hurricane Katrina. In 2009, we did physical cleanup work. In 2012, we did learning. And in both, um, our being in New Orleans brought the community revenue, and as residents would tell us, a sense of caring. They had not been forgotten. At TeenServe, the residents were overjoyed with the new paint or ramps that they received, but mostly the interaction with the crews at their homes made them feel cared for. The trips to Oaks Indian Mission and Holden Village were experiences in learning as well, both externally and internally. Learning and understanding about the path of the indigenous people over our history brought on conversations of injustice and justice. At Holden Village, I traveled a more self-awareness path, seeing God in the beauty of nature around me. Meeting new people, learning their stories, and seeing our youth engage with others or our own group opened up new ways for me to see God at work and gave me opportunities to let my light shine for him. Thanks. Thank you, Jill. What a delight to hear your stories, and thank you so much for your ministry as you've uh, chaperoned and also experienced God out in the world. And now we get the opportunity to hear from Max and Will Jacobowski about some of their experiences on those trips. A little bit of service around the community and also just, you know, learn passages. And uh, it, was, it was a great experience. And then I was also uh, privileged enough to go on, I think, three or four different service trips uh, through my middle school and high school years. And so that was great. We were going to uh, typically an uh, underprivileged area. And, and really, you wouldn't think it was. Like, some of them were a couple hours away. Um, but uh, just to get out there and help serve uh, people that are a little bit underprivileged and, and just realize and appreciate what you have. And, the, and then we come back at night um, and, you know, have service and, and just kind of um, grow together and, and love God um, and also just bond with other congregants at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I still have some great friends from those service trips, people I still keep in contact with. Um, so it really helps you grow and really helps you meet some great people. And you know, what else is also that's kind of heartwarming is we get to bring it back to you guys in St. Mark and say, hey, here's what we, uh, us young people did. And a lot of times you guys are so um, um, open with your, with your hearts that you give and be able to let so many of the young people go. So we really appreciate all those who donated back in the day to allow us to go and be able to uh, do these service trips. And we hope in the future you'll continue to um, be very uh, generous um, and help support and any youths out there or young kids who are looking to potentially uh, go on a service trip in the years ahead. Uh, I'd say it's definitely worth it, especially with, you know, your fellow friends at St. Mark. Um, it's just a lot of blast, but uh, or, uh, just a great time. Um, so we really encourage it. Um, I know we're a little older now. We got facial hair and everything like that, but we still look back fine finally on it. Um, and I know you'd recommend the kids definitely go too, Will, right? Definitely try out one. Definitely get out of your comfort zone. It's good for you to grow that way. And I think that's um, growing in your faith is also very important as a young adult. So, mm -hmm. Well, we, we wish we could be with you and kind of telling you in person of the great times we had. But um, service trips are, uh, you know, just a major part of St. Mark, especially for the youth and kind of getting them acclimated. Um, to what St. Mark is really about and uh, God's calling. So uh, thanks for giving us a couple minutes to share our experiences uh, with the youth trip. So we'll make sure to post those videos on our Facebook page so that you might take a look at them. We'll probably include them in the e-blast as we're able to as well. But you heard these stories of people going out and how they've experienced God how they found God to be with them, how they found God to be out there wherever they have gone, and how they've been changed by that experience. Perhaps you too have been on one of those trips, and you have stories of your adventures, where you've learned from the people you've met and the work you did and how you've been changed 
by your experience of connecting your faith and relationship with God, with the work that you do each day. But it doesn't just have to be on one of those mission trips. Every day, as you leave your house, as you go into the world, you are doing that same work of going to share the good news, to share the love of God, perhaps with a kind word, perhaps with a helping hand, perhaps with simply being who you are and seeing other people you interact with as beloved children of God. And so I give thanks for the many ways that this congregation has gone out to far places and for especially the ways we go out to near places here in Mount Prospect or Arlington Heights or wherever you may go in your daily life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hear our prayer. Out of creation, bless fields and orchards, protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. 
instruct your people in wise treatment of the world that you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. We think especially about Afghanistan today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any company, all who are lonely and feeling abandoned. Remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited and open us to their cries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, a new school, or a new community. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of beloved ones. We give you thanks for all the saints who have gone before us and renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those in our hearts, known only to you. We pray them all through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those around you. As part of the 75th anniversary, we reached out to former pastors and um, family members of former pastors to send greetings and um, a memory that they had of their time at St. Mark. And we received a letter from the Quill family, um, from Timothy Quill, and he says, Dear friends, greeting from the Quills, Irene, Stephen, Charlotte, and Timothy. We send our warmest congratulations and affection on this occasion of the 75th anniversary of St. Mark. Dad's years there as senior pastor were busy as St. Mark saw incredible growth from 1961 through 1979. Though the work was almost never ending, Dad and Mother dearly loved their years there, and as preacher's kids, we were spoiled nearly rotten. We were also watched closely and couldn't get away with very much. Mom turned 100 years old in March of this year, and while her mental capacity is sharp as ever and her physical health is fairly strong, her eyesight has been lost due to macular degeneration. If not, she'd be writing this instead of me. She asked me to make sure to send her love and best wishes to all. I was asked to share a memory, and while there are numerous, the one mo most vivid is being awakened by Dad almost every Sunday morning in the winter to get up at 6 a.m. and shovel snow. Seemed it always snowed on Saturday nights. My memory of the sidewalks around the church sanctuary are they were endless. The Holmbergs lived on Pine Street and would start shoveling there, and we would start on Willie Street, meeting somewhere around the Evergreen Street entrance. My senior year in high school, the church council voted to buy a snowblower. I recall thinking it would have been nice if they could have done that earlier. I also recall the 25th anniversary in 1971. I believe the theme was blessed to be a blessing. St. Mark, through its dedicated pastoral and lay leadership, has been just that, a blessing to the community. Thank you for your past ministry, which has enriched the lives of so many. Please continue your important work to teach, preach, and baptize. The town of Mount Prospect has been richly blessed by your work and your faithfulness to your calling. Best wishes now and for the bright future of St. Mark. God has been generous and kind to you, and I'm confident he will continue to be. Please know that while we cannot be with you physically, we are with you in spirit and pray that your anniversary celebration be joyful and blessed. Love the Quill family. Thank you, Linda, for sharing that letter from the Quills, and thank you to the Quills for that memory of shoveling snow and the many ways that they used their gifts 
uh, to serve uh, this community. And thank you for the many ways that you use your gifts to serve this community. And now, if you'd stand, we'll offer our prayer of blessing over those gifts. God of love, for 75 years you have moved and continued to move the people of this community to give generously of their time, talents, and resources, to share your love with the world, receive the gifts we bring, and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Amen. At this time, we gather around this table for that sustaining meal of bread and wine turned body and blood. So you'll want to get out the cups that you got when you came in. Or if you're worshiping with us through Facebook Live um, or later on YouTube, go ahead and collect your crackers or bread, juice or wine. We'll say the, Lord, we'll say the words of institution. After the Lord's Prayer, we'll all open our wafer part together and partake in the body of Christ as one. And then we'll open our juice or wine and partake of the blood as Christ as one. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Gathered into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have strengthened our hearts through this feast of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path, that we may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you in the way of love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. People of God, receive this blessing. The blessing of God who loves us, provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we sing.
in the world. Thanks be to God.